In this video, I'll be going over Groove View nodes. I'll show you how to read in different inputs, write different outputs, and at the end, you'll end up with a nice generic flow like this one that you can apply to many different applications. The first thing you'll need to do is enable the Node-RED runtime and come up and open the Node-RED editor. Once you're in the editor, if you check the node palette on the left-hand side, you'll see that there are no opto nodes included by default. Now, in order to install new nodes, the device that you're installing them on will need a gateway to the internet. In this case, my Epic is connected to my home router over Ethernet, and so I'm able to come up to this menu in the top right-hand corner, select Manage Palette, and search for any nodes I want to install over here on the Install tab. There are many nodes included by default, and you are free to use those until you've added new nodes, but we will need this Groove functionality. So I'll just search for Opto, and you'll see all three node packages that we have available. Be sure to install the Node-RED Contrib Groove nodes for Groove View, and not the Groove I.O. nodes, since they do something different that we've covered in a previous video. Since this is the node I want to install, I'll go ahead and select that button, confirm the installation, and I can view the log to make sure everything comes down okay. Now, depending on the version of Node-RED you're running and the version of the nodes, you may see these warnings, but they're usually not a big deal, and as long as you get a return code of zero and you see the nodes added to your palette, you're good to go. So, after just a couple of seconds of waiting here, we'll see them added, and there we go. Added 84 packages, we get this green pop-up at the top saying they're added to the palette, and we get this return code of zero. Now that I know we're good to go, I can close these windows, scroll down to the bottom of my palette, and we'll see that the nodes are added here without me having to restart Node-RED. Now let's drag one in and see how they're configured. Both of these nodes will share the same configuration, and we'll have a look at that later, so it doesn't matter which one you start with. Here I've selected a read node, and we can double click it to see how it's set up. So the first thing we will need is a data store that we'll configure in Groove View. We'll also need the specific tag name, and if it is a table, we can set the index and the length of data that we want to read. We can also define exactly which part of the message that it's being written to. It defaults to message.payload, but we can set it to any other message payload property if we do want to put it somewhere else. Finally, we can set the topic and give the node a name. Let's start at the top with this Groove data store. You'll see that I don't have one configured, so I can use this pencil icon here to add a new Groove data store. In order to configure this, we'll also need a Groove project and the data store name. You can have multiple data stores for one project, and you can have multiple projects across your entire Node-RED flow, especially if you have multiple devices. So here I don't have a Groove project set up, so I'll again go one level deeper, and we'll set up the Groove project. To help you keep track, there is this at the top here that you can see that I've edited the Groove read node, I've gone to add the data store, and now finally I'm adding the project. There's a layer build up here where we need to have this base layer of the Groove project before we can read a specific tag. So I am running Groove View on my localhost system here, but you could use some other system, but I do need to set my API key. Let's go see where that is. Back in Groove Manage, I'll go to my home screen, select accounts and users, and here you can see I have two users set up. I'm going to go ahead and select this node red editor that I've already configured, but you can add a new user if you would like. I'll come down, select this user, and at the bottom of the page you can see this API key here is what I want to paste in. I need to make sure I have the entire key selected as it is case sensitive and we do need every single character here. I'll just copy that to my clipboard, come back to node red, and paste that in. You can see that it's kept hidden with dots, but if you do export this project in its entirety, this API key will be in plain text, so just be mindful of that. Now when I select add, we can see I have to select set the data store name. Now I don't have a data store configured, so let's have a look at what that looks like. Again back in Groove Manage, I'll go back to the main menu and select Groove View. You can see that I don't have any pages yet, so let's quickly switch over to build mode from the menu here and we'll come down to configure devices and tags. Now if I select this, I get a pop-up here and I can add a new device. Another way to reach this menu is to come up to configure and select devices and tags here. They'll both lead you to the same place. Now when I do the add new device dropdown, the one I wanna select here is data store. Now this isn't a full database. It's not going to historically log things. I can just set a certain amount of tags with certain names and values and display them or control them with Groove View. 
So I'll keep it nice and simple and I'll call it node red or lowercase. It is important that the data store name that I type in here matches the data store I type in node red, so I want it to be nice and easy to remember so that I don't have any typos. With that set, I'll go ahead and select create and we can see this new device is added here now. If I select the node red data store, I can now come over here and select configure tags and this is the pop-up where I'll actually create the tags that I'm reading and writing from. So I'm going to create several options here. We're gonna just click the plus icon here to add new tags and we're going to add a Boolean. This is just going to be a simple on off value that I'm going to call switch. So I'll select save and I can come up here and add another tag. I'll also add a decimal number that I'll call number, click save and add another and I could add another decimal number but in this case I'm going to select a string. Now in this case I am going to make this a table with four different values in it so that I can have a table of strings here. So with that done, I'll click save and I have a switch that is a Boolean, a number that is a just decimal number and a string table with four values in it. So now I'll click close, click close again and just add a sample page where I can display all of these values. I'll call this node red. You can set the other settings here as you need, but we're keeping this nice and simple focused on the nodes. So I'll just click done. Now when I want to add new tags here, I can either do it from the gadget page or the tag page, but I'll go ahead and add a tag here with a number. Now I do want to set this value, so I'm going to use a text box, drag that in up to the top here, and we'll see that I can set my number right here. We'll just make that our only gadget for now. Click File, Save All Changes and Switch to Groove View. Now you'll see that it's initialized to zero, so I'm gonna go ahead and set it to an actual value to read in, the number 22. So now when I click save, there we go, we've got this number with a value of 22. So let's go ahead and read that in. So I'll go ahead and go back to node red and we have our local host set up here with our API key already put in and we'll put in the data store name of node red. Again, all lowercase, nice and easy to remember. Now when I select add, that's the only time I will ever need to do that. If I even click done now and drag in a groove right node, double click it, we can see that I have this node red data store all set up and you'll see that this red triangle, meaning that this node is misconfigured. When I click done, there we go. The red triangle goes away, meaning I have configured this with an actual data store. It's just not deployed yet, which is why I still have that blue dot there. So let's go back to our groove read node and we want to read in that value of 22. Now that is in my number tag in the node red data store. So I can go ahead and type in number and because it was just that single number, not the string table, I can leave the table index and length blank since it does not apply to this particular tag. To keep things simple, I will output it to message.payload and I'm going to give this node a name that is read number. Now when I click done, there we go. That's all I need to do as far as configuring the Groove node. Now when it comes to Groove view, you just need to trigger it somehow. In this case, I'm going to be reading with an inject node, but your source could be anything. It could be a database call, it could be a trigger from another system, even a physical button press. The important thing is that this node gets triggered and you have somewhere to put the message.payload that it produces. So in this case, I'll scroll to the top here, drag in an inject node, and also drag in a debug node. Now it's important to make sure they're all wired together and that I actually deploy them all before I continue. We can see that everything's correctly deployed because I don't have any of these blue dots and I get that successfully deployed green pop-up there. So now we'll come over to my debug pane and when I inject, we'll come in, read the number, put it in our message.payload and display it on the right hand side here, the value 22. Now to confirm this is working, I'll go back to Groove View and we'll put in a relatively random number like 88, click OK. And when I come back to node red, I can inject and there we go, we get the new number right away. We have a direct connection to this value right here. Now what if we want to change that number from node red? Let's have a look at that. We'll use the same groove right node that we brought in earlier, double click it to configure it, and we'll put the number tag name right in here. Now the value we're going to write is going to come from our message.payload and we're going to call this write number. Now when I click done, we see we have write number here and I will drag in a new inject node and a new debug node so that we can see how all this works. Now, before I actually deploy this, even though I've wired it together, I will change this timestamp node so that the payload I'm injecting is not the timestamp. I want to inject a new value that I'm going to be setting to show up in Groove View. So 
that payload is now going to be a number. I'll just select that from the drop down here and I'll pick a number like 44. Let's split the difference between these two. So now when I click done and deploy, let's just confirm in Groove View. Yes, our, our number is still 88. So I'll go back to Node Red, inject that value of 44. And when I go back to Groove View, there we go. We can see that the number has been up, updated right away. So now we've got the basic reading and writing taken care of. Let's really quickly take a look at some other values. So the first thing I'm going to do is come up here to the menu, switch back to build mode, and I'll add some new gadgets here. So down in node red, we have my switch node here. We'll just make that a nice simple toggle button here that I can control up at the top. And we'll also bring in all four values of our table as text areas. Now, when I first drag it in, although this is associated with a data source, I don't actually have that data showing up here. In order to have it show up, I need to put in the pound symbol or the, the hashtag here so that I can actually have the value. And you'll see that it switches to blue here, like the number in the switch, to show that it's actually showing a value, not just whatever fixed text I type into here. So we'll just leave it to represent this one data source, this table. You can even stretch it out for a longer string, and I will duplicate it. And the reason I'm duplicating this is because the table actually includes four values, not just one. In order to represent these four values, you'll see here we have the numbers zero through three. So for the four values, we have zero, one, two, and three for all items in the table. This first one is set to zero, so I'll set the next one to one, the one after that to two, and the last one to three. Now that all four values are set, I'll be able to see my table here in Groove View. So I'll select File, Save All Changes, and we'll see I have my new switch enabled here that I can toggle on and off. And we do have our table values here, although you can't see them since all the strings are initialized as empty. So let's start working with some of this. I'll go back to Node Red, and we'll switch from reading our number to reading our input and output value. So now instead of number, I'll read my switch. I will put it on my message.payload and rename the node and click Done. Now, instead of just reading this whenever I click the inject, I want to know when this button is updated. So I'll double click this timestamp node, and instead of just injecting when I select it, I'll inject once when I first run the flow, and then I'll repeat this on a one second interval. So now every second, I'll be reading this switch, and I'll display the value to my message.payload. But I don't want to hear every single second that it's turned on. I only want to know when it goes from on to off and back again. Thankfully, Node-RED has a node for this called Report by Exception, or RBE node. So it only passes data if the payload has changed. So I'll drag that in. You'll see my little Node-RED wire there will go dashed, knowing that I'm going to drop it in there. And we'll see that, yes, this has been connected to the flow. So now it will block the value unless it changes, and that value that it's checking is the message.payload. So now when I click Deploy, we'll get our first value in that's true automatically. And if I come over to Groove View and turn this off and come back here, we'll see it's turned to false, but I'm not getting any repeat values, just this toggling between true and false. Now I have a really easy way to control my node red flows directly from Groove View using this simple flow method at the top here. Now let's take a quick look at that table. First, we want to write some value in there to make sure everything's working. So instead of our tag name being number, we'll be referring to the table. And I'm going to pick the first index, index zero. So now the value I'm going to write is going to come from the payload, but I'm now writing table zero. So I'll go ahead and select done, clear up my debug pane, and we'll change what payload we're injecting. Instead of putting in the number 44, I'll use this drop down to change to string, and I'll make it say something like hello. Now when I click done and deploy, I can now come over to the side here and inject on this hello node. We'll see the hello show up in the debug pane here and back in Groove View, we can see that our first value does in fact have hello written in it. Now let's just add another one really quick. We'll add a follow up to the second value just so you can see how this table works. And instead of writing hello, we will write world. Now when I click done, deploy, we'll get that true message through again as that's going to happen every single time I deploy and we'll hit inject on this world. It will again show up in the debug pane and back in Groove View, we can see we have hello world. And I also have two other slots here I could fill up. Now you don't have to write message.payload every single time. You can use a more dynamic message object if you're reading something in from another node or if you have a more complex flow going on. 
The important thing is that it's very easy to read in data and send data to Groove View using these nodes. The other thing is, it works really well across all different data types, and they come in through Node-RED as the data type they're supposed to be. Here we have a Boolean, a string, and earlier working with the number, we did in fact have a number. If you have any questions about this, we do have forums that we'll link in the description below, and feel free to leave a comment on the video.